Welcome back to the LCS. Before we jump into the next game, let's highlight the players that put in the extra effort to set up their teams. Just to say, I'm helping. Presented by State Farm. In their game versus Team Liquid, Niski, Sneaky, and Sven Skarin all do their part to complete the Baron Steel. Still can't see what's going oh, on. Stop. When can they pull the trigger? Sneaky trying to make something happen, trying to get Baron to aggro and reveal himself. Over the wall! Are you kidding me? Another ping. Moving back over. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go go in. Go in. Nice. We got nice. it. Nice. 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 I can go down mid. I can go down mid. That was one of two Baron steals uh, that we've seen recently that kind of happened in exactly the same way. One team backing out and leaving the Baron within that combo range of mid laner and jungler. And you know, th those weren't the comms I was expecting. I thought it'd be more like three, two, one, go. Let's do it. It's like, go, go, just do it, just do it, just take it. <laughs> on me, on me. Yeah. yeah, the longer you give your team to think about the Baron, the more team you're giving the enemy team to think about the Baron. And Syndra's one of the best at stealing it with her burst damage with her W being true. It's just so much damage. Right, generally speaking, when you're doing Baron and you want to keep it alive, you want to keep it above 3k health. When it drops under 3k health, it gets very, very questionable. As the game goes on, that threshold of the HP you need to keep at raises and raises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. About that 2.6k mark is where they decided to go in. They get that Baron Steel. Didn't net them the victory, but it was still slick, to say the least. We'll see which members of Cloud9 step up as we send it over to Riv and his ale for Game 4. Thank you very much, Dash, and welcome to Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves. Let's turn to the teams loading onto the Rift. On the blue side, it's going to be Cloud9. That means in the top lane, it's Licorice roaming around in the jungle. Sven Skarin holding down mid is Niski, and bot and support is Sneaky and Zazel with Coach Reaper and Rapid Star. It's like red side opposite them today will be 100 Thieves. In the top lane, someday in the jungle, Onda, mid laner Soligo, bot and support gonna be Bang and Aphromu, Ghost Brawley. Cloud9 feeling good now. While the playoff picture is blurry for most teams in the league, it's much more clear for the C9ers. Pick up a win here and you lock in a spot in the top six. Yeah, they're looking strong despite losing to TL yesterday. It's fair to say they're definitively the second best yep. team in the league. There were some weaknesses shown, though, certainly, and that's what they want to keep brushing up on. Sven Skarin did not have a good game yesterday, but if you want to secure your playoff spot here today, that's the stuff you can work on, right? The little individual mistakes, like the, the Q flash that he missed on the Aatrox in the early game that resulted in first yep. blood going the other way. And the reach of playoffs seems less clear here for 100 Thieves as they fell to TSM after gathering considerable leads, and things need to be patched up soon for 100 Thieves. So they really do. I mean, their mid to late game has just been absolutely tragic. They seem to consistently be able to, to have advantages in some of these games, but they are throwing them. And when you have those kind of leads, you need to be able to seal out games if you want to have those playoff hopes staying alive, right? They are not mathematically eliminated yeah. by any means. They are still close in this race, but you can't have someday up 4.5K in a 1v1 and then lose that game if you expect to make playoffs. True, and it doesn't get any easier. I mean, it's easy to say that, but you figure something out and teams will say, oh, that's the one thing they have. You kind of have to already have things set in motion once you do figure it out. So if they are looking for the light at the end of the tunnel, it's going to be tough to start now. 10-3 Cloud9 versus the 4 900 Thieves if he's jumping to game four of the day. Picks and bans underway. And as for Cloud9, they have the second easiest strength of schedule remaining in the rest of the split. So That's they right. certainly have the ability to run the table, close out you know, with just the three losses, which would put them soundly in second place and have them and their fans feeling confident going into playoffs. Run the jewels. Mm -hmm. Get them all. <laughs> Lucian Kindred, the final bands here until we see Cloud9's first pickup. What they feel like is going to be good for today. And it's going to be Niski Syndra right off the bat. Hello. Yeah, the blind pick center here coming in for Niski, feeling confident against Soligo. I do know that that is one of uh, Soligo's, you know, more played champions, certainly something that he had been very yesterday. confident on. So, you know, we did see that yesterday, as, as you point out. Going to be taking that away, trying to remove some of that comfort from him. And we'll see if Sunscared and Niski want to try to team up and actually focus on him, because this is a guy who's playing you know, his second stage game in the LCS. They have Barons to steal, too. <laughs> That's true. Zale, come on. Um, Alistar looking for the lock in here for Aphromu. Very well known to the initiation. I wonder if we'll get a cow ball in. Get some Orion on Sligo here. 
Get some of the old initiations that we haven't seen in a while. Six seconds for a second pickup. It's going to be Lissandra, actually, so mid laners will already be matched up here in the beginning of picks. And I think this makes sense for 100 Thieves. You know, for a team that is certainly struggling in the later stages of the game, I think they should be drafting simple win conditions. And a lot of engage is something that makes it obvious how you're supposed to actually play this out, right? With Lissandra, with an Alistar, you have very easy ins to start a fight. That can be their way into trying to close out some of these games if they can get ahead. Possible Casio hover as they're looking for a jungler, almost replicating yesterday's composition here. Uh, they are in the first two picks, at least. We'll see what number three is for phase one. And we do have to remember that the Aatrox is a flex pick. Mm -hmm. Licorice, Svenskeren, and Niski have all played it. We're certainly expecting Syndra to be mid, but this still could be a flex between jungle or top. And we do know that the Galio is very likely going to be support. One of the things that, that C9 has done, though, in the past is sometimes not draft a really good way into the fight for Galio. They're using it more almost defensively. We saw them struggle with that against TSM, where they were really having trouble against this poke composition getting in throughout that game. And the only real way in in that game was a Kindred and an Aatrox for the Galio to alt into. So yep. it'll be interesting to see if TSM wants to draft in something that rather C9 uh, drafts in something that can kind of dive forward and give Galio that way to follow up for the initiation, or if they want to use it purely defensively against all of this dive that is being drafted here from 100 Thieves. Maybe the next few picks, or I should say bans from 100 Thieves will obviously help shape that, but their last two picks, C9 will say, hey, we see Bangs. I think we actually need this guy to go in. I want to know, I thought it might be the Nocturne actually banned out by 100 Thieves there. And that's just kind of turning out the lights if you get the Galio in as well. Exactly, right? They they pick away the Jarvan, so that's one way. You know, they could flex this Aatrox top and put Jarvan jungle. Well, that's gone. Nocturne's gone. So those are a couple more ways in for the Galio if they want to try to dive. So 100 Thieves certainly cognizant of the ways that Galio is going to have to get into a team fight. And they're trying to take them all away. The Let's see a Zach. Yeah, I mean, you could still go for something like the Zac. I mean, there's still obviously Gragas. There's a lot of options that they could go for here. Yeah. You could just put this on your jungle and draft something that can That's dive true. in uh, for your top lane. We saw Licorice actually have a great game, I thought, on the Poppy yesterday, even taking a solo turret against Impact yeah. in that 1v1. They, they played that lane immediately, too. You know, it's like it's not like he's on Poppy, he'll be in the island, and then we'll help him. No, it's like, oh, let's go up, he'll flash stun, and we'll get that lane going right away. They will always play up towards Licorice. There's also options of things like a Kai'Sa. The Kai'Sa, you know, if you can if you can get some sort of plasma out, he can dive in, mm -hmm. have the Galio following up on Ooh. that. I have also seen very killer uh, more people playing Callista Galio, and that is a very strong initiation where you can throw that Galio Ooh. into the middle and try to utilize that to play fairly aggressively. I like here. the multiple initiation. Be like you jump in, save, throw <laughs> in, like oh, they're just repetitive knockups and bounce house. We have Bang and his Ezreal, so this should be a great lock-in. We'll have a safe farming lane. He can also put down the plays if he wants to, knowing that champion inside and out. Now, this is where we're seeing if Cloud9 is actually going to place these champions. We should get an idea with these next few picks. Yeah, we definitely will. And 100 Thieves are going to have very likely the counter pick for top for someday. It's possible that they could put Jarvan up there or even Lissandra three, theoretically, but I'm expecting it to be a top lane counter pick here. 400 Thieves, Corky coming through. Very interesting. So that's very likely a bot lane Corky actually here for Sneaky uh, to be paired up with that Galio. So it will be Aatrox top, Sejuani in the jungle. How about a package and Corky as well, yeah. <laughs> this is my, my only concern from this from C9 is I think they drafted way too much magic damage. Corky is almost purely magic damage. It's about 90% with the passive making 80% of your autos deal magic damage. And then most of your spells are, are magic damage there as well. The only physical damage they have is the Aatrox, which is not someone who can really threaten tanks as well as, as some of those squishies. So there certainly is the potential to build a lot of MR. Someday did not go for something that is going to be a, a magic resistance stacker, like a, like a pure tank for that 1v1. He is going to be grabbing the Vladimir instead here. A lot of dive, a lot of team fight from 100 Thieves. We'll see if, if this magic dependency kind of comes to bite C9 in the butt at all as Banshee's Veil, Hex Drinkers, all these sorts of items are going to be so, so effective yep. against this composition. Someday first play on that Vladimir as well for this spring split. Number one in CSD at 10 at 7.1. So he's going to be want to stay in the side lanes, own the side lanes, stay away from this Galio composition of Cloud9. We'll see how they can do it. 
Azalea, you already talked about a few of the things you were worried about in the comps. What else are we seeing here that like 100 Thieves needs to do in the beginning of the game to find the win against the composition like Cloud9? I mean, I think you, you want to see Onda kind of pair it up. I think especially with Soligo, that seems like a very strong lane to try to attack here. Lissandra plus J4. If you can get the advantage in the mid lane against Niski, pushing him in, then you can start roaming across the map as a squad. Even if you can't actually kill Niski, you can all of a sudden have the Jarvan and the Lissandra showing up in a side lane, trying to create advantages there. And then for them, you know, we've seen they've had good early stages of the game, but they need to be able to close out. They need to be able to bait around objectives, force team fights, and try to create action on their own terms. All right, we're about to be in to the match. Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves, and we are on to the rift. We'll see if 100 Thieves can get something going, kind of start that fire under them as these last few weeks of the spring split are upon them. And honestly, it's been just such a disappointing split, 400 Thieves. When you look at expectation versus result, they are, I think, probably the team that is farthest from where people thought they would be at this point, right? <laughs> Agreed. A lot of people were saying, okay, for sure top three, top four at worst, but we had people predicting as high as number one as champions, as people who would be up there with TL. Instead, they're sitting here at the bottom of the standings and really look like they're not having that week-to-week -week improvement. So 100 Thieves certainly need to try to pull things together because there still is a lot of talent on this team. Someday individually has been incredible. You know, Soligo is a, is a new talent, but certainly very strong in his own right. Absolutely. And a quick sideline report. See how Cloud9 feels coming into this game. Thanks, Riv. I'm here with Reaper. Reaper, just have to ask you, we've seen Koki in the mid lane a few times, but what about Koki bot lane here for Sneaky? Oh, uh, it's a sneaky thing. He loves Koki bot lane. And uh, one thing that Azale actually brought up that I found interesting is that there is quite a lot of magic damage in this comp. So are you worried about that at all in this draft? No, not really. They are not tank door, right? Yeah, they are not tank door. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Alista, but it's Alista. Anyway. Best of luck, big brain as always. Back to you guys at the casting desk. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if these guys do go tanky, right? Because while there isn't necessarily the pure tank, we've been seeing a lot of tank Jarvan. You know, you mm -hmm. certainly could get something like an adaptive. Uh, you know, Hexrinker is going to be very efficient, QSS, Banshee's Veil, perhaps on someday, and Soligo. It doesn't always have to be, you know, pure tank, but to his point, you know, they're not checkmated by something right. like a Mundo or, or a Maokai who's going to be immune to death mm -hmm. later in the game. We did see the Jarvan for last game, Acadian building the Knight's Vow. Not that he'd want to. For, <laughs> <laughs> it's magic resistant, but yeah, it could go for that tanky buildup. On to here, starting on the bottom scuttle. This top is being grabbed by Sven Skarin, so all things according for both teams to start off. Actually, Sven Skarin's gonna try a little bit of an invade here. Onda's gonna get there late, and we see a bit of a tussle on the bot side as level twos are hit at the same time. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how Sneaky is actually gonna play out uh, this kind of matchup with the Corky. You know, theoretically, he is also another way in for the Galio in the team fights. If you have package, you can potentially dive deep. You yeah, have the Galio to, for. to kind of back you up there. And Sven Skarin can certainly try to be diving into the middle here on the Sidwani also, and you know, looking for that Galio backup. But C9 certainly are, are heavily favored here, and Honda is coming mid. This is a low mana Niski. Bring the Frost hit, gets the cleanse out immediately, and they're just gonna use Honda's pressure there so we can stay aggressive in the jungle. Yeah, that is still a really good gank, because even just forcing out that cleanse means the potential for a repeat gank is that much higher, right? You may not get anything happening just now, but as Soligo resets, if they can set up a repeat gank, try to kill off Niski yep. early, that could be a way into what I was talking about earlier on, to getting Soligo that lane advantage, to then taking that and bringing that to the side lanes and expanding that pressure across the map. Eyes are kind of on Soligo. What will he be able to do in place of who he? And have that Lissandra for late game. Can he be the control mage that 100 Thieves needs? Someday pressuring up. Onda's here for the counter gank to see as Fence Garen wants to get into a fight. He's still in the jungle. He's focusing on getting the level so the team can get to the fight phase. Use this Galio and the rest of the composition. And you can see Licorice going for the Comet here. This is kind of more just about poke. Mm -hmm. uh, you hit that Q if you actually land the knockup that does hit confirm your Comet to land. So it is fairly strong, but this is nothing crazy. You know, he, he's not going to ignite Aatrox. He's going to have a lot less kill pressure as a result, but I'm going to be interested to see how much he wants to build for the pure 1v1. Uh, you do in solo queue especially see a lot of people rushing things like just early executioners, which can be very, very effective against the Vladimir because in those extended trades, it becomes very hard for the Vladimir to actually withstand. You know, he's very cooldown gated. He doesn't have 
a really high consistent DPS. It's more kind of in these bursts, and he relies on the healing from his Q and his ultimate to keep him alive. So, be interested to see if Licorice goes for it. Someday pinging out the ward, top side. So it could be a different entry for Anda if he decides to go lane. His jungle needs to be cleared bot though, so we will not see any. We saw Suligo pushing out Niski and not actually biting into a low mana Niski. I like that. He wasn't tricked. Sven Skarin was right in the back pocket of Niski to make the play, and Sligo just said, you know what, I'm actually gonna ward, because I think this is a trick, and I'll have vision if whoever's going through mid lane. Sneaky down to 200 HP. After was there, but they can't take a lockdown. They're now on to Zazel. As Sven comes around the wing, vision's there, so Bang's able to back off, and the potion is on just in time, but Anna's in for a little too long now. The back and forth, thinking everybody's gonna make it out alive, and they stay for the last moment. Yeah, I couldn't tell if Anda just missed the flag <laughs> drag or got interrupted on it, but either way, Bang was already running out. Yeah. This is one of those cases where it seems like the team is not on the same page. They are not communicating as Anda is going in, Bang is running away. It ends up costing the jungle flash here, which could have potentially been used to actually kill off Niski, who is now down without a cleanse. So you're removing a lot of that pressure that J4 would otherwise have because he has the ability to go for these flag and drag flash knockup plays, and really, that is gonna reduce so much of that lane pressure he'll have. Licorice getting a few good hits in, doesn't wanna feel this Crimson Rush though, it's gonna sting. Attacks back, chains go down, but he could not get the same pool of someday pulled back in here. So, uh, even up on CS, now we'll watch this replay in the bot side, how everything transpired. Yeah, it looked like it was starting off very, very well. You can see Sneaky getting very low, but Zazel doing a great job hitting the full combo onto Bang, but Bang has no help. He's, there's no intention of him actually going forward, Ooh. and then looked like it was an interrupt, I think, on that yeah. flag and drag, so well-timed there by Sven Skarin to actually stop that. Does cost and his flash, and shouldn't have been staying up that far forward when his AD was already out of there. Sven piecing everything together. Bami Cinder as well. Just get a little bit more off of this Mountain Drake before you can get back. I'm gonna take it just yet. They want vision control, it appears, towards that bot side. A good push by Niski in the mid lane is allowing Cloud9, however, to roam with power and numbers even before 10 minutes here in the game. As we just see someday pushing top side, Licker is still up in CS there as he's farming nicely. All quiet, really, on the home front to start. Just a little bit of a fight in the bot side with no one going down. Only summoners. Oh, oh. <laughs> Like, are you really gonna fight me? Yeah. There's the ultimate. I didn't think anybody had the damage to do it, but it looks like they wanna actually flex muscles in the mid lane, push up there, and this might be what it's for. They wanna take Saligo out of this situation for blue buff. Great pressure by Sven, Zaze will be in the block and bodyguard there, and they're gonna be able to deny that blue from Saligo. That seemed like a bit of a weird claw to take there from Saligo, and he wasn't, yeah. his jungler wasn't around, he didn't really have kill pressure at all, so he went in, eats the ultimate, Niski gets more of that lane pressure himself as a result, and it is starting to push him in. Farm pretty even overall though, but Sven Skarin and the bot lane, the fact that they had that advantage down there, they are able to invade, take away the blue buff, and C9, pretty strong in these early stages, though it is a very even game. Seeing the mid CS, 66 to 56, so not too bad for the substitution mid laner on the side of 100 Thieves. One connect, possibly the second one, just out of chain range for some day. He gets himself to safety. Always remember, walk sideways, not out of that chain. Yeah, exactly. Perpendicular to the attack, and you'll always get out. It's so much harder to actually just run straight out the back <laughs> of it, but... And Vladimir can use the pool to escape as well, and mm -hmm. someday stay in safe for now. You can see Licorice at least isn't gonna rush the Executioner straight up. Uh, he is just going for kind of the, the cooldown reduction as fast as he can possibly get it. CDR garage sales, Flowers would put it. Yep. Gonna be picking up probably very likely a, a Black Cleaver. Uh, you have that plus the Call Fields and very likely you do get Transcendence out of Sorcery. That puts you at your 40% CDR and that is where you really can start ramping up how often you're using the Qs, the dashes. Aatrox really does like that CDR. Same thing here. Someday is building up a little CDR health to start off mm -hmm. with his Kindle Gem. He's just keeping himself happy in lane. The Crimson Rush, and he's right back in the fight all the time. Sork Boots to start off for Niski. Sligo says, Merc Treads. I don't want to take as much damage from these ultimates that you're going to be throwing in my face all the time. Yeah, and there's so much CC coming out from this Cloud9 composition. When you think true. about it, you know, if Soligo, who, who's not playing Cleanse, mind you, gets hit by a Scatter of the Weak into a Sven Skarin ultimate, into a Galio Taunt, there's all these things. So he wants to make sure that he's not going to get locked down before he has a chance to use a Self Ultimate or perhaps later on a Zonia's yeah. when he picks up that item. So certainly is, I think, a, a worthwhile buy against this Cloud9 comp. 
some forward wards placed by Niski. Sven Skarin, an idea. These forward wards by Saligo, they'll keep seeing Sven Skarin as he runs across. So they have a little bit more information on what Cloud9 wants to do. Doesn't mean that 100 Thieves can actually act on that. Yeah, as you see, C9 easily going to pick up this dragon. But you can see, you know, 100 Thieves are holding fairly even in their early stages, right? The gold is dead even. The only advantage here is likely going to be this dragon for C9. This is not where 100 Thieves struggles. It is the later stages. It is the mid games. How they work together. How they coordinate as a team. Are they on the same page? Is their shot calling on point? And that is where you really kind of have to track them to see, is this team improving? Can they actually challenge C9? Because I'm not surprised that they're able to hold even in the laning phase. They have certainly a lot of individual talent on this squad. Looking around at the monies. Getting out with final purchases. Stopwatches now in hand as 10 minutes comes across that. I'm waiting for those level six press R plays possibly here in mid lane on Niski. They may want to extract that blue buff off his person. And someday gets himself safely under turret. Licker is still doing a good job of keeping him kind of Staying in lane, not teleporting out. And they're avoiding fights as well. Not that 100 Thieves really wants to teleport out into the Galio fight C9's looking for. But we've definitely seen Someday have better days in lane. Yeah, Someday is going to be, I think, pretty okay with how it's going, though, based on the matchup. Vladimir certainly is, is one of the weaker early game champs. Oh, yeah, and you just get to come in later and say, surprise! Exactly. You get those levels, you pick up the CDR, you know, 9, a level that people point out very heavily because you're maxing that transfusion, uh, but also 13, very, very big for him when you have max QD. 13 by damage is massive, and there is Ezreal putting out some damage himself, procking that W. Anytime you can actually proc the W with Q, Alt, really anything, uh, you are going to be able to put out quite a significant amount of burst, and Bang is a good amount of farm ahead of Sneaky down here on the bottom side having a comfortable time and scaling up with this tier. A sneaky special, as we heard Reaper say. He just likes it. I guess that's good enough to play it in composition <laughs> here, <laughs> coming into week seven in the end of day two. Yeah. Rift Herald here for Sven Skarin and Cloud9 on to just on the other side of the wall. They may kind of go back and forth, but a good inside track by Niski. He'll stop Saligo, also low on mana in that mid lane. Who's gonna really go for it though? No push here from Licorice just yet. Not seeing anything in the bot lane, but a fight. Sneaky's gonna stay alive on this one, and even with the ignite down, Zazel has to be careful. And a low alpha move, getting out with alt on onto low, going down. Nice hit by Saligo. Saves on his life, but the auto attacks from Niski are enough, as he can't get far enough away. Saligo now to run away. Rift Herald's gonna be going back. Pick up. Leave this bond. Yeah, they weren't able to actually kill it off, so right. gonna be able to have to just have that reset and. Yep. C9 comes out on top there, getting the first blood as the ultimate off Anda, the stopwatch off him, and the flash. So expensive fight. But down on the bottom side, it is 100 Thieves pushing. They are going to be able to pick up two turret plates here as well as stopping that recall from Zazel. And Zazel barely was able to actually keep Sneaky alive with a really nice double taunt. So well played by him, but it is 100 Thieves with the bot lane priority. Here is this fight one more time. Back up on the top side, since Garen. Just throws the ultimate straight onto and uh, he has to use the stopwatch very early on as it's a Syndra ultimate coming through. And that was a great scatter of the week as he knocks him out of the flag and drag there. Niski making sure that there's no chance they can turn that one around. And Saligo didn't have the mana to really continue the fight. So maybe an ill-advised one to take in the first place, but C9 executes better in the 2v2. Yeah, so overall that force. Then Skarin was there. We saw Niski have the inside track. There's the chain in. Someday takes quite a bit of damage as he tries to fight back within the minions. Has to skirt out quickly and heals back up with the transfusion. Now we're getting a little heat under ourselves with the fights back and forth. We get one mid, we've got one bot, and Someday and Licorice will not stop throwing punches in the top lane. Back to that Rift Herald though, Svenskeren feels they could pull another fight off and see if 100 Thieves will bite. And I think he's certainly right. You know, they could try to do this once more. They have the pushing top lane, mid lane is pushed in as well. So you know, the only thing is if extra members come around here, but someday getting chunked pretty low. You can see Aphromo is roaming up. So we'll see if they expect him. There's the headbutt, locked down quickly by the Azul. Aphromu took that Glacial Prison immediately. Teleport's coming in now from Someday as they try to get in. Actually, that's going to be Ezreal, I believe. Yeah, Bang's in the fight now. True Shot Barrage right off the start as they lose Anda. And it is not going to be quick enough for Bang entering the party. Nobody stays for the rest of the fight. Two to zero now for Cloud9. Yeah, Anda goes straight in and just dies immediately. Didn't have the stopwatch or flash off the last fight. Sneaky's going to be able to have some free time in the bot lane to shove in here. 
And C9 again winning out on this play. Aphromoo's ultimate down just after that last fight. And this could be another pickup on the cow. They could take him down. A good hit. Ring of Frost by Saligo to save his member. And now Bang's going to be there for help. Things are really touch and go right now. As 100 Thieves can get a little ground on the map, but they're losing more ground than not. Yeah, good peeling from Saligo to keep Oh, alive. Bang! Into the bottom side of the fight. Sable takes down Niski. This is a big fight here for 100 Thieves that they can keep it in their favor with Bang Healthy. Another kill coming through for Saligo. Now they're on to Sunday, or on to Licorice, I should say. And saving him. Sunday now healing himself back up. Licorice is going to go down. Bang's in the middle, trying to get some more shots forward. And Saligo will not follow the claw into the fight. A back and forth, but 100 Thieves, very nicely done. Yeah, Bang just popping off there. Are they not going to try to defend the eye? I think they can stay around. Cataclysm on Azazel defending the eye would absolutely be huge. It's around 40 seconds that it stays, so they do have to wait. And we'll have to see if we have running in here from Sneaky to try to pick that one up. Looks like he's going to pull back, and they'll be able to protect. Yeah, and if they don't get this, they certainly lose very heavily out on that play, it does despawn. So C9 just losing a bunch of kills, not able to actually pick up the Rift Herald Eye either. Sven Skarin did try to go and grab it, but did get taken out. Here is this play one more time, and this is bang! As he is popping off in the team fight, jumps over the side, kills off Niski, in onto Sven Skarin. Look how close he was. The corpse is basically touching it, but that's a ghost, buddy. You can't pick it up. And then the timing on this Licorice kill is just insane. He goes down right as the passive expires from that ultimate. So not getting the revive, does fall down. And even Zazel dying in the act of trying to grab that Rift Herald yeah. Eye. So 100 Thieves getting a lot out of that. Almost 2,000 gold ahead. Significant advantages here now in mid and bot. You can see those bounties stacking up for these guys looking pretty strong across the board. We'll see if C9 can kind of pick those up, or if these guys are going to be able to run away with it. It was the second test. They went right back to Rift Herald and said, 100 Thieves, let's do it again. And 100 Thieves knew exactly what they wanted to do differently. Could have the same situation here. C9 much more hesitant to start this objective. And, and that really was the difference maker from Bang, right? He had the yeah. bot lane priority. Sneaky was pushing in bot, and it looked like originally, okay, well, it looks like Bang has probably wasted his TP, comes up, not able to get anything. I think that Cloud9 expected Bang would have just run straight back to bot. Perfect. and tried to pick up those minions that were being shoved in. Instead, he stayed around, he committed to the extended play, and he does get rewarded for it because they had the extra man there. That's the plays that 100 Thieves needs to see from their individual players this late in the season. Oh, Saligo with those Merc Treads keeping himself alive, basically, but he needs to stay out of harm's way. Svenskaren just over the wall didn't decide to ward, and Saligo lives for another day. Sven in, gonna get some forward wards through as he sees the rest of 100 Thieves retreating. Yeah, and Saligo, despite the Merc Treads, is having a very squishy build here. He went straight for the Ludens, so a lot of upfront bursts. The CDR gonna be very nice there, but this is nothing like Aroa or you know, early Banshees or anything to kind of keep him safe, and you can see just how much pressure Niski has on him with an early ultimate, sending him right back to base and allowing them to grab a dragon. This is also going to put C9 in a very nice position as far as neutral objectives when they do come up later on. This is double mountain now, so that is giving them that much more access to that Baron, to being able to potentially burn that down if 100 Thieves are not tracking that, or if 100 Thieves you know, lose vision in that area. And C9, I think certainly one of their biggest strengths this split has been their vision control around objectives, shutting teams out once yep. they get an advantage. Oh, he's trying to orb dodge, but he's actually walking into more and then the range that would allow Niski to even provide more damage. So not working out. And Niski just in the head of Saligo right now saying, I have mid, they'll probably draw pressure. Let's see what we can create across the map. Credit to Saligo though. He's basically even in farm. He's gotten a couple kills and ooh, nice cell fault. And just got a block. We'll be able to back off, but he has played against Bjergsen yesterday, Niski today. Not easy opponents no for thanks. your debut weekend here in the LCS. And he has not looked outclassed. I mean, he's, he's playing quite well. Yes, there have been mistakes, but this is mm -hmm. a very young player you know, making his debut on the LCS stage. And I think he's had an admirable performance, everything considered. You're coming in on a team that is in last place struggling, and he's looking good. Gonna get taunted off of Sven Skarin. Anda and our Anda and Afro move. We're gonna leave, but Bang no. Off. Anda goes in with the Cataclysm. Crew Shot Barrage not actually doing too much damage as it crosses two members. Sven Skarin and Zazel. 
Amanda goes in after move. Looks like he's in a real sore spot here. Gets slowed one more, but the ultimate's on, so he'll be able to break that CC a little bit easier. Things not going 100 Thieves way there. Though. And this gives free time for someday up in the top lane. That was the TP used from Licorice down there to try to support the squad. They weren't able to get anything from it besides, you know, a flash in the ultimate out of the Afro move. So someday we'll get some alone time here, be able to push that in, try to close a bit of that CS gap. And you can see that Licorice has picked up the Executioner, so he is building towards a Death Dance, Executioners, and Black Cleaver. That is a terrifying three items to have there on the Aatrox. Sneaky grabs first hurt on the bottom side. Bang and Afro have been doing a pretty nice job moving around the map, supporting the squad in other areas, but that does give more free time for Sneaky and making good on that, closing up that gold gap. A lot of times in the past, when 100 Thieves did have that lead, it wasn't in multiple spots. You were seeing one shine. They haven't gotten the entire puzzle to come together. Here, a few of those threats are working out now, where you see Soligo able to provide some damage. Now he's going for the Oblivion Orb. Now we have the Nirvana and that Triforce for Bang, so they definitely have a few more options this time around. They really do, and as we talked about, they have kind of clear ways in, clear ways to play out this composition, right? This is not something super complex where you have to one through one and do all this fancy stuff. You can just die, right? You have the Lissandra, you have the J4, you have the Alistar, lots of ways in. The Vladimir can follow up. Ezreal has long range ultimate to follow up on those engages as well. So certainly there is the potential for them to do it. And they are going to have the advantage of the efficiency of magic resistance. You can see a cowl already picked up by yeah. Anda. You can see three pairs of Merc Treads grabbed up there. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these other members grabbing some more MR as time does go on. And we'll see if that's going to really come into play at all here in this game. Looks like Sneaky has taken to the top lane now. It's back to laning phase for him with two turrets up in one spot. Someday's happy to farm back against that. And it meets him up top. So they're just playing it slow right now, waiting for these minion waves to get in order. Next bear, or Dragon, I should say, is up at 115. Baron's already on the map for a minute and a half here. His bang continues to farm the mid lane with a little help from Afro. Side lanes are still taken by Licorice on the bot side, though. As they've started to rotate, I wonder who's going to start getting the better of that someday or Licorice. You can also see that Bang hasn't elected to go straight into a double tier. And he also went Triforce instead of the Iceborne because there is not a lot of physical damage here on this squad. So he's going to kind of go for a higher DPS build there with the Triforce. We'll be interested to see if that third item is going to be straight into... Oh, Ooh, his Merc Treads may give him a little bit of help here as well. He gets to the back line, but that's still going to be the front line according to C9. They take down Afro Moo as well. Beat Patties all around as Someday tries to get a little bit of damage in. But they are just up the creek right now. C9's headed to Baron. That was just straight up disrespect from Bang shifting forward Oof. with all those members around. But Merc gets Treads. so punished. <laughs> Someday now. In a bad spot, Zazel just missing on that taunt of the Durand. And Saligo's gonna say, I got it, don't worry. Flashes out of that one with self all on. It's not looking good as they use everything in defense to retreat. They did at least buy enough time, kind of with that little 4A forward. That Bang is back, Afro is back, so there shouldn't be done. a C9 Baron. Right. Uh, but it is a lot of summoners down. It is a nice couple kills for them. They picked the bounty up off Bang as well, so gonna be feeling good about this. And the initial. Poke is good. Why are you shifting forward into Sejuani Galio? And if you're going to do it, then you need to have communicated to your team that you're going to do it so Afro or, or Anda can be standing in front of you so they cannot go for that sort of return play, right? Uh, this is just really overconfident there from Bang. A big mistake. He gets punished, loses his life, loses his summoner. C9 going to get a lot off of that. He has a Cutlass as back, so he had a little bit of gold in the pocket there. Zanius is up for someday. A bit of the playmaking ability that 100 Thieves would want in these fights, starting to come into those inventories. Bang now playing a little bit safer in these fights, as C9 is going to be looking for those engages over and over. That's the fight they want, right in the mid lane. 100 Thieves gave C9 what they wanted, but now biting back. Nice job getting the Drake out as C9 is recouping from purchase and coming out of base. Yep, we'll see if Bang is going to go into the Blade of Rune King or Gunblade. I think probably we'll see Blade of Rune King this game as they're... Without the sword boots. Yeah, and, and there is also just a lot of kind of tanky members, people with a lot of HP that are going to be in the front. There's going to be this Galio, the Sejuani, as well as the Aatrox. who's going to be building up some HP that you're going to have to deal with. So we'll see if that is going to be his choice. But on the other hand, Gunblade certainly can result in more burst if you feel like you can kind of thread those shots through and, and get onto those squishy members. You do have more kill potential on them. 
quick true shot check. Everything is in order. Nobody's doing Baron <laughs> right now. A few wards getting pushed up. Looks like we have Licorice doing some pink ward duty over towards Dragon. So the river is now being cleared. 100 Thieves is being pushed back on their own side of the rift only now. They don't have much forward vision. And if you look at this top jungle here uh, for them, you can see how they get jumped on quickly. That's the vision we're talking about. Glacial hits bang, but he's able to get out of it very quickly. A little bit of a pause and fight there as everybody was holding their breath. We see Afromu going down very fast, even oh. with the ultimate on. Now they're on the hand up. Saligo's just on the side. He's going to take the claw into the Ring of Frost, but he's still not able to provide much damage. And they are just dropping 100 Thieves left and right, turning upside down, shaking out the lunch money. Someday's the last one left. He's going to be trying to do his damnedest under the turret, and it's not going to be enough. Sanguium pool, but that's all he's got left. Sneaky flashes forward, and that's the ace for Cloud9. Sneaky getting the delayed Quadra there. Four kills for the Corky. They're going to be straight to Baron. And as I was going to say before they just exploded into that fight, it's off of this vision they have in that Quadra. They're so good at setting these fights up. They have denied so much vision in this area, gotten so many wards into that 100 Thieves red side jungle. They're able to find the fight. They're able to get a clean ace and the Baron. And 100 Thieves, that may be the straw that broke Camel Camel's back here. Yeah. In goes Andy. He's trying to fight for this vision, but he just gets found out. Sven Scaron again. Nice ultimate on to Bang, catching him again. Sneaky comes in. The fight is pretty split here. Aframu is just having to retreat, but gets shredded through his ultimate. And then Sneaky diving into the back line. Bang and Someday are not by him, so there's not really a lot of threat onto Sneaky, who's gonna make this aggressive play. They're able to clean up Soligo, and Flickerish has been buying so much time on the Aatrox with this Death Dance, with his ultimate, tanking up a lot of damage and allowing Sneaky to pick up this delayed Quadra there on the Corky. Coming out of base, five lumps and the broken back. <laughs> Just five quick hits. Nine to four here. It's 27 minutes is coming up onto the clock with a 5K gold lead in favor of Cloud9. Yeah. It's going to get bigger too. It's very hard to actually defend these waves, right? C9 going a 4 1 split here. Aatrox in the mid lane, shoving up those waves. And he's playing it very safe because he knows if people don't show to defend this, they can just get the inhibitor tower for free. 100 Thieves not even going to be there to contest whatsoever. Now the mid lane turret is going to fall here as well. And 100 Thieves has certainly struggled at this point of the game when they have yeah. been here before they have not looked to contest we'll see if they try to make their stand or if they're just going to bleed out these inhibitors as the first one almost certain to fall second one is going to be starting to get pressured here as well the critical decision making do we watch it go down do we take it right before it goes down when do yeah. you take the perfect fight how much can you give that's a question they have to ask themselves here as they're actually moving forward to poke away at the Nexus turrets. You know, 100 Thieves have got to kind of pick their moment here. They may just lose the Nexus turrets. An interesting fight. Someday in Licorice in a 1v1, a 4v4 cannon. inside the base. Three cannons on the outside. Zazel kind of trying to body block here <laughs> as Bang's Mystic shots are coming in. Now they have different attention on the Siege minion, so it won't keep taking that same turret down. But it is one Nexus turret down, and now another inhibitor turret. It's legal low, he put the cell fault down. Alphamu looking for a way in from the side, but he cannot. He just retreats. Now he may have the back line in his eyes, but Sneaky staying just out of range, and they're able to fire in the damage now from the outside. Sneaky going low. Bang can only hit the true shot barrage. The mystic shots are just missing as Cloud9 is able to dip and dodge past the damage of 100 Thieves. Eyes are on that last Nexus turret, and it looks like C9 might be here to stay with Licorice yeah. teleporting back in. Yeah, I think he's going to TP back in. They're just going to go for a straight up end. 100 Thieves waiting too long to try to take that fight and not able to find it. So C9 looking like they're going to close this one out, Riv. They're going to push themselves forward. 11 and 3 in their record book as they take down Alpharamu to pad the stats just a little bit more. 28.30 on the clock here as C9 skirts around Bang, making sure he can't get the KDA. And Cloud9 take down 100 Thieves. Very clean finish there from Cloud9 once they had the advantage. Five for zero fight into Baron, into just ending the game. And 100 Thieves, the mid and late game woes continue, but Cloud9 gonna cruise to an easy win here in 28 minutes. And they look good. And locking in that spot for the top six as well. Cloud9 feels very good coming out of today. And as Reaper, super happy. They weren't tanky, it's okay. That's what he said, it's fine. It was true, they never got tanky. They, uh, you know, just completely 
kind of fell apart in that one fight yeah. around the mid lane. You know, Bang certainly a couple errors getting caught by that Sejuani ultimate a couple times, put them in a, in a bit of a rough spot. Mm -hmm. Final team fight there was not close whatsoever. 100 Thieves as well, trying something new this week, coming in with Saligo, as we were saying before, performed well against the options he was put against in TSM's Bjergsen and Cloud9's Niski. The, the, the mistakes that he did make were kind of, I, you forced his ultimate out, so the pressure was lost. It wasn't the lane mistake, it wasn't kind of the overall mistake, it was that small one where his pressure of an ult or an ability down was what Cloud9 preyed on. Yeah, definitely the case. I think that the, the problems are, are kind of looking the same for 100 Thieves, where it, their early game looks fine, right? They're able to hold even. They actually had some advantages. Their bot lane was winning. Yep. Uh, mid lane was you know, sitting at 202 or something like that. He was you know, even in farm as well. They're looking good. But when it comes to actually coordinating for the team fight, coordinating for the objectives, the team is almost always on a different page. Right. They're never seeming to be able to pull that together. And a team like Cloud9 is going to be able to punish those missteps so effectively because their communication, their coordination really is on point. Mm -hmm. That, I would say, is the strongest part of that Cloud9 team, and they were really able to demonstrate it here against 100 Thieves. Absolutely, even faltering on the second Rift Herald attempt where 100 Thieves, we saw Ken instantly mm -hmm. reassess the situation and say, we need to take this into our advantage, find a way to win it. That's there for them. It's not consistently there for them, and that's definitely what needs to be built from. We said coming into this game that their expectations for this split were much higher, so people are really expecting more. Cloud9, however, hitting those marks and riding on Cloud9. For more on that win, Pastry has got the Cloud9 bot laner for an interview. Thanks, Riv. I'm here with Sneaky, and I've just been informed that Cloud9 have now locked playoffs. Congratulations. How does it feel? Pretty good. I still want to get uh, top two, though. Makes sense. Now, right after the game started, I had a quick chat with Reaper, and I asked him about Corky bot lane. I said, you know, usually we've seen it mid, but why in this case? And his only response was, it's just a sneaky thing. Could you elaborate on this at all for me? Uh, I mean, I've just been playing the Corkster bot lane for a bit. He's pretty fun. Um, I don't know, you normally wouldn't think he doesn't work that well bot, but with the buffs they did to his rockets, uh, like a lot of patches ago, he actually hurts a lot. Like, you can actually just two-shot people, but no one really plays it right now, and I've been trying to make it work for a while, so I guess that's why he says it's a sneaky thing. Certainly worked this game, and now reflecting back on your weekend, you played two very tough opponents there in the bot lane. Kind of looking back at your games, how do you feel now that you've played both double lift and bang back to back? Uh, I mean, it's not much different, like no matter who I'm playing, honestly. It's just about matchups. It's like, do we get pushed? Do we get pushed in? Are we winning trades? Are we losing trades? So, yeah, I mean, I don't really feel any pressure depending on who we're playing. Well, congratulations on the win this weekend, and thank you very much. For now, we are going to throw it back to the State Farm Analyst, Des. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. Sneaky says he feels no pressure. You've played many a game with the guy. What's it like being on a team with him? And have you ever seen Sneaky under pressure, or has he always kind of got that air of ease about him? Well, I mean, how he is on stream is literally just how he is, you know? <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. He's just a giant meme. He wasn't always that way, you know? I think he could slowly turn into a meme lord over he time. Evolved. I'm going to have to blame Meteos on that one, to be honest. He's a very nice, innocent young guy. And the longer he spent time <laughs> with Meteos, I changed. I don't know, man. That was that clip of him before he went pro on the Tarek, just hard trolling odd one. That was a okay. pretty throwback, like, ah, you're kind yeah, of But trolled. that's like trolling in-game, right? Yeah, yeah, person, yeah. right? But now his entire personality is trolling. Well, either way, you heard it there. Cloud9 locks a spot for playoff. Seeding still to be determined as we move through the final couple weeks of the LCS. But a win here over 100 Thieves, a team that continues to struggle day after day here in the LCS. Yes, 100 Troubles. 100 Troubles. I like that uh, Niski kind of threw down the gauntlet versus Soligo. Saw him play Syndra last game. First picked it, like, show me what you got. Pick something into it. And he, he picked Lissandra, and I think he actually did okay relative. He was ended up 2-0-1 with equal gold at, like, 15 minutes. So I think he was doing fine. I'm going to have to say, this is one of those things where you look at the stats and it seems fine. But you have to watch the game. Yeah. He never passed the mid lane line. Like, you can look at his proximity past mid lane, and it was just never there. And Jensen's had pressure the entire time. And then we play this one clip of where 100 Thieves actually kills C9. And honestly, C9 can't do this. Like, we were watching this replay, and we're like, hey, what could C9 have done differently to secure this mechanically? And the only thing they could have done was not be here. I mean, these are the kind of plays that against a better team, you lose the game. Like, giving up a Herald like that, you just gave four kills away against a composition that, if played properly, can legitimately duel you quite well with a very powerful Ezreal since he no longer has to go with the Frozen Fist, goes with the Trinity Forest, 
And these are the things I want to see Cloud9 clean up. Like, Sazel, you're going back in. What are you trying to do? You're trying to sneak the Herald back? Nah, right. It's already gone. Yeah, so uh, misplay there by Cloud9. Good capitalization from 100 Thieves. Want to jump back to your forward percentage point. 9.2% uh, out of solar. Ah. That is that is quite low for a mid laner in terms of 4%. Right. So exactly that. Not really achieving much. The stats look good. <laughs> but he had no mana in the entire lane phase. Never roamed and just, no. A bit of a self counter pick. I mean, Syndra is always right. good into Lissandra, and you don't get killed ever as Lissandra because you always just self ult if the Lissandra, or, uh, Syndra ults, but you also don't win the lane phase. But I think it was the team comp pick where he's like, I'm going to engage and dive backline with Vlad. And you saw it work out that one time there. The problem is 100 Thieves late game is but non existent. Liss is kind of the beta pick. You go in like, you know what? I'm just going to go help <laughs> with the team. I'm not going to try to win with the lane. All I'm saying, Syndra, go Ziggs, okay? Ziggs ah. can deal with the Syndra. You push from far away, you're not going to hit a better push percentage, but at least you're dealing with the wave you want and you're endlessly wave clear. Why just try it out, man. Like, Overwatch at much. this point, <laughs> at, <laughs> this point <laughs> at this point, what are you gonna do? A hundred it seems like nothing they're doing is working. At least with Ziggs you're literally wave clearing forever. It's gonna be so much harder to defend to for the enemy to dive you to take your turrets, you know, try something. Something new at this point. Well, I don't like what A I'm good seeing. champion might have been Oriana. I, was gonna say I Oriana. don't know about Ziggs, <laughs> yeah. but, you know. <laughs> well, maybe somebody will pull one of those two out in the coming games, but I do want to dive into that kind of more macro or higher level point around 100 Thieves and what they're doing in mid to late game. And we have a couple micro examples that we want to jump into here to kind of talk about the team and the miscoordination, miscommunication, or whatever it is that, you know, kind of is, uh, you know, befalls this team here once they get into the mid to late game. So let's dive right in. And High's gonna take the main point here, but this is for everyone on Reddit, Flaming Bang for, for shifting in. Watch what happens here after Syndra stuns. And High made a really good point about what should have happened. Right, so you're obviously gonna question mark the Ezra that ease forward. However, top tier players know how to bait out skills and start good fights. So once Syndra missed her E, you saw Bang E for it. Now the only thing that really needs to happen here is for Afro to W away Niski. If he does that, then you have two tanks going onto the AD carry in the jungle. There's no way they win that 2v2. So had Afro just done something different here, this could have been a really good fight for 100 Thieves. And instead, it turns poorly because you see Syndra just walk up and just kill the Ezreal. His threat assessment is way off. The Sejuani has already ulted your Ezreal. He's not going to do much else the rest of the fight. Right. Go on the guy with all the damage and protect him. And then, like I said, you baited out Sejuani's ultimate. Now you have more pressure to fight for vision and He stuff. built Merc Shreds, too. So it would have been even better for the Ezreal just to tank that out. Probably can survive. Has Flash. Has the shift later on. It's... It was just the right move, actually. Right, and it, of course, can be difficult to pinpoint exactly whose fault it is in those situations because we don't know how much lead time Bang gave in terms of awareness for, hey, this is an aggressive play I might make. Uh, but as you're mentioning there, your threat assessment as a pro player, as a top support in the league, should be adequate enough to know this CC, massive CC spell has already been used, so there's a very little threat coming from that direction. Let me zero out or remove the possibility of damage coming from the Syndra. Let's now jump forward to our next replay here. We're going to set it up quite similarly. Again, Bang, with an aggressive position, is going to maybe now put Aphromo in a position where he thinks he has to do more than in actuality he should. Right. In this scenario, you see 100 Thieves getting caught up, so you see Jarvan E queuing out. At that point, you should know that the team, or the entire idea of the team is to disengage. So you see Anda running away. Bang gets caught here, yes, but he's perfectly fine. He's safe. But then look at Aphromo again. It's the thing where Lissandra's nowhere in range to actually help contribute into this fight, and you're going to get collapsed on. And yeah, maybe someday could have tried to go over the wall with you or something, but you're going to be putting your team in such a bad position from that point forward. It's only... Uh, Afro that goes over the wall, and then here comes the Aatrox, here comes the Corky. And everyone else gets baited. They're thinking, well, Afro went in, we might as well try to engage and save this play, but the cooldowns have already been burned. Soligo roams down, it's too late, and it's just one play snowballing, pooling to the other, and it's just so hard in these situations for you to tell yourself, one of my teammates messed up, I'm gonna just let him die and look like a complete buffoon. But then it just starts snowballing and everyone looks bad. Right, this turned into an ace plus a baron off the back end of it again. So just to your point, one little minor mistake when you try to overcompensate, overcorrect for it can just massively snowball to an even bigger one and it ultimately lose you the game. Uh, and so just a little bit of a dive into what we think is going on with 100 Thieves, or at least what we would want to see cleaned up. These kinds of moments, when you get to those 5v5 skirmish phases, you need to have cleaner, crisper decision-making around target prioritization, when to fight, when not to fight. 
It's all the stuff they used to be good at. They used to be good at the mid to late game team fighting and macro plays, and that seemed to have yeah. completely gone out the window. Not Final the, point. Not to toot our own horn. I think this is a really good segment, making <laughs> educating people, being like, hey, this is what's going on. This is how they should be playing. Knowledge. It's easy to look bad as the ADC who's eating in, but if the team support isn't there, then it's not entirely your fault. After the break, Kobe gives us a rundown on what makes non marksman bot lanes work ahead of Clutch Gaming versus CLG, so you don't want to miss it. Don't oh, I see the horse. Oh, it's a sneaky oh, fan. Oh, he's don't. a sneaky fan. Don't. No wonder he's wearing a horse yeah. mask. He's into cops. Don't look the horse mask in the mouth, in the face. In the face. What? Don't you'll, look at it. You'll get hypnotized. Yeah. You'll be unable Is to. Is that play. true? Yep. Really? He turned into the horse. Oh, no. World's facts. Low alpha move, getting out with ults on Onda low, going down. Nice hit by Saligo. Saves Onda's life, but the auto attacks from Niski are enough. Oh, Ezreal dash in. I would see, I would see. Yeah, I'm coming, coming. Fighting mid, fighting mid. Coming down. Oh, Ezreal, he's low. Ezreal flash. Ezreal's one. Okay, good. Alistar no flash. Alistar no flash. Alistar no flash. Five seconds. Nice job. Woo! And they are just dropping 100 thieves left and right. Turning upside down. Shaking out the lunch money. Someday's the last one left.